Hello and welcome to Parklands Church. How are you all today? Well, if you're living in Wales, you know we're three days in or two days or 2.5 days into lockdown 2.0 and we're back in our homes. But today we were gathering for Church Online to really help us in this season to, to just look away from our circumstances and look to Him. And it's great you could join us today. Thank you for connecting with us. Do send us a, a message in the chat bar. Do send someone a text. Um, it would be great to hear from you today. Today we've got the, the pleasure of Mike sharing more from our Abide series and talking about prayer and how we can talk to God, particularly in this season um, of separation and being separated in our different homes around the city, nation and world. Because I'm really encouraged there's many of you as well connecting from all around the UK or even around the globe at the moment. It'd be great just to hear where you're, you're connecting in from um, right now in this moment in time. Today we've got, also we've got some worship. We're gonna spend some time just singing and singing as loud as you can in your homes or your kitchens or wherever you are. And um, also we've got the kids team bringing us a great kids slot just to encourage us. And right um, towards the end as well, stay on, um, particularly if you've got youth and children to engage with Emanate and they've got a challenge for lockdown week. As we gather today, I just was really, well, I was listening a lot to, to various different songs, but just thinking about this concept of just coming alive um, and, and being joyful in this season. And lockdown 1.0, we, we spoke through Philippians and, and the joy passages of what it is to have joy in, in challenge. But I was really reminded of the, the passage in Ezekiel today, and I just wanted to read it and to pray over it because... I don't know how your weeks have been on the lead up to, to lockdown 2.0. I don't know if you're running a business or you've been involved in school and trying to adjust, but each and every one of us in our own circumstances are trying to adjust left, right and centre. And today I just really felt reminded that God is in control, that God just loves us um, and he can can bring our circumstances alive, even when they feel absolutely desperate. He says this in the Old Testament, in Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 4, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And I just love that, that even in this most desperate valley of dry bones, the Lord can break through and come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones. And I just want to pray for that right now because I, I know for one, um, I've had a roller coaster of a week, like I'm sure many of you, but I know God is good and God can lift me from that dry valley. So I just, I encourage you, it's, it feels a bit weird, but I just want to do it. I just encourage you, wherever you are, just to stand on your feet before we have a time of worship. And I just want to pray. Lord, thank you that we are alive in you. Lord, thank you that we have a hope in you, Lord. Thank you that we have a future hope in you, Lord. And thank you that you are the ultimate Sabbath and you dwell in our hearts, Lord, and we can dwell in you. And I really pray right now, wherever we are, in our homes, in, whether it's that in our lounge, our bedroom, our kitchen, in the garden, wherever we're connecting right now, Lord, you would meet with us and your Holy Spirit would break through in a fresh way in our lives. And Lord, you would bring us alive right now. You would bring us alive in this season. Lord, we, your church, would shine brightly in lockdown 
we would look to you and praise you with all our heart. Be with us, Lord Jesus. Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones. Sweet.
Hey guys, welcome to Parkland's Kids. I'm on my own today, but it's okay. Sarah will be with us next time. But we got some amazing news for you guys. So you've made it, you've made it to half term, which is really exciting. You guys have worked so hard. School has been a little bit different, but we're so proud of you for working hard and getting on with it. But you've got a well-deserved rest now. And over the next few days, from Monday to Friday, over half term, we are bringing Kids Church live that's right we're gonna be live here from our little studio we're gonna be live from here every morning 9 30 for some activities worship and a little bit of fun as well some of the guys from the team are going to join us we're gonna have matt we're gonna have mike myself and sarah hannah jordan ludy we're all gonna be doing some fun activities for you guys every morning at 9 30 so we can't wait for you guys to join us it'll be on our youtube channel so look out for it and we'll send you the link via Facebook and all the different channels as well. So that's it, we're really excited. So we also have an amazing guest for you today, and that's Ali Farr. She's gonna be joining us today, 
and she's going to be taking us through an amazing story. So Ali, I, there's no introductions here, take it away! Hi everyone, today we are going to be talking about prep. That's the topic for today. And I just was thinking, you know, prayer really, it's just about talking to God and spending time with him. I suppose we could think it might be just asking God for things, but it shouldn't really be like that. It's just talking to God and having that relationship with him. And um, when I was growing up, we used to sing this song and it goes a bit like this. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Oh, hang on a minute. Hello, Ali Far. Oh, oh, hi, Father God. Um, look, I'm really sorry. It's not a great time at the minute. Um, yeah, I know. I know I said that I was going to be free to chat this afternoon, but actually, you know, I'm a bit busy. I'm into doing something and um, yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh, hang on later on. No, there's a program I want to watch on TV and I've got to walk the dog, so maybe tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow? Yeah, great. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Father God. I knew you'd understand. Yeah, chat to you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Sorry about that, guys. Bit of an interruption there. Just maybe think, you know, is that what we like when we come to talk to God? Um, or maybe the conversation should be more like this. Oh, Father God. Yeah, I was, oh, I've been dying to meet with you all day. I've got so much to tell you. Yeah, loads to tell you. And yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Lots of things that you want to chat with me about as well. I know, yeah. I tell you what, let me get comfy and then um, we, can, we can have a really good chat. Great, oh yeah, great. Hang on, just let me get comfy. See, I was thinking that maybe it should be more like that. You know, that we just want to relax and spend time with God. The Bible tells us lots of things about prayer. It tells us that it actually is just about getting to know God and wanting to spend that time with him. He is our father. The Bible tells us he is our father. Jesus himself prayed and said, Our father who art in heaven. That's the Lord's prayer, isn't it, we call it. And uh, just thinking, you know, that the Bible says, God is our loving Father. There's a verse somewhere in the Bible that says, if any son asks his father for bread, well, God's not gonna turn up and give him a stone instead, is he? He's gonna say, yeah, get your teeth into that, son. That's not gonna happen, is it? So if we ask God for things because he's our loving Father, if it's things that we really need, then he will answer our prayers. So thinking about the Lord's Prayer, when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray um, in the Bible, um, he says, how should we pray? So he teaches the disciples to pray to their father, God is their father. And then part of the prayer is, give us this day our daily bread. So things that we need for survival, for everyday living, that's what God gives us. So this would be Bri's prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Thank you, Lord, for providing things I need to survive. And I was thinking, you know, uh, maybe like Dan and Matt, things we need to be thankful for. Whoa. Hey, like Dan and Matt. Oh, Father God, thanks so much for this wave. Whoa, it's fantastic. Yay, thank you, Father God. So the Bible tells us that we need to be thankful to God for the things that he provides for us. There's a story in the Bible about a man named Daniel and how he was thankful to God. He prayed three times every day, but it got him into a bit of trouble, as you can see when I read the story. Daniel in the Den of Lions, Daniel chapter six. Daniel went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God. A group found Daniel praying, so they went to the king and said, Didn't you publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god except to you, O king, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, The decree stands. Then they said, Daniel pays no attention. He still prays three times a day. So the king gave the order. 
they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God rescue you. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and he couldn't sleep. At dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel, Daniel, has your God been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, my God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They haven't hurt me. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And last of all, we're going to think about where we can pray. The Bible says that we can pray anywhere, anytime. God's always available. It says he's never going to go to sleep. Every time you cry out to him, he's there and he's going to listen to you. So if we can pray to God anywhere, I'm just thinking about the places we could use. We can even pray when we drive in the car. Although I would recommend not closing your eyes. The Bible does say that the best place to find would be a quiet place where you can spend time with God on your own. So, as you can see, we've learned lots of things about praying. How to pray, when to pray, where to pray. The most important thing is that we actually do pray, that we don't just shelve it all the time, but that we get on and do it. So for all you Strictly fans out there, instead of Strictly Come Dancing, Strictly Come Praying. And keep praying!
enough to carry me through it all by the grace of God. Isn't it good that the church is still alive and that we are his church? And no matter what's going on, I just really want to encourage you to keep pressing in to God. Mike, in a moment, is going to continue in our series about prayer. And this Abide See series is, isn't just a checklist. It's, it's for us to share some thoughts on how we can press into God more than we've ever done before. Because this week is the unusual week as we've entered this another lockdown, as I mentioned earlier. But I do feel again that the church needs to, to shout a battle cry of hope and joy in this season. Because that's why I do what I do. That's why we gather. That's why we produce these videos. That's why we have circles at the heartbeat of church, is to encourage each and every one of us to stay connected with God and stay connected with each other and spur each other on. Um, but most importantly, that we can rise a battle cry of to this city and this nation to say there is hope and it's that same prayer of the dry bones for those who are struggling right now that Jesus brings us hope Jesus brings us more and we as the church can stand up and shout about this we can sing about it but we can love this out as well we can see it happen in action and I just want to just continue to pray for all the projects that we've got connected with in and around this city, from Zach's place um, down in town and all the work that Sean and the team are doing there. And if you'd like to get involved and volunteer, please do send us a message and we'll connect you up. For the food bank project in Sketi, where we've been supporting the whole way through and many of you have volunteered there, continue to, to pray for this project. And for the Care Fund and all your generosity. Um, and it's amazing that we're such a generous church and God is, is blessing us in this season. And I just want to say, as we've, we've entered this season, if anyone needs access to some support in this lockdown, in this time of not being able to go to work, please do connect with us. Send us a message. Um, give us a shout say a hi. We'd love to connect you and either connect you with a phone call regularly, whether that's connect you with some support to help you if your, your wages aren't the same as what they were. But we're here to be the church and his, his hands and feet in Sketi, in Swansea and in this nation in this time. So thank you for, for being a family and thank you for journeying with us. We've got a great God that we can really look to in this time and hold on to um, as we continue to journey as a church. Before Mike comes, I just want to also say a big congratulations to, to Dan and Harriet um, for their little baby girl um, and the bundle of joy that she is to them. And for Brian and Ali as well for, for being grandparents again. I know they, they're absolutely delighted. So it's lovely to, to have you join the family um, and be part of and just adventure with us as well. I'm going to hand over to Mike now as he talks all about prayer. Hi my name is Mike Adams and I'm part of the staff team here at Parklands Church in Swansea and welcome to our online service. Over the last few weeks we've been looking at the practices of staying close to Jesus, of abiding with Jesus, of remaining with him. And Hannah's done a great job over the last two weeks of unpacking silence and solitude and Sabbath rest. And we come to our next uh, practice, which is prayer. Now, just to underline before we go into this, that these practices are not meant to be a tick box of five practices that you do, and as soon as you've ticked them, you've cracked it. Not at all, because if that was the case, then the Pharisees would have done an incredibly good job. Instead of having Jesus is 
uh, harsh words. They would have had words of praise from Jesus because they did all of these things. They fasted, they prayed, they were on their own. They did all of the stuff that we're talking about in these practices. But their hearts wasn't turned towards God. So the first thing to say in these practices as a reminder is that it's a heart attitude. It's turning our heart turning our very spirit, our very being towards God. And these practices are there to help us to do that. They're not like, um, you know, get these right and it's all sorted. It's a turning towards God and these practices that help us in that goal of being and remaining and being with, with Jesus. Also to mention that although uh, we don't strive to bear the fruit. The fruit comes from abiding in Jesus, if remaining in him. The fruit of the Spirit, flow, the, the life of the Spirit flowing through us and bearing fruit. There is a job for us to do. You know, it says, remain in me, abide in me, stay in me. It says that because there's a chance that we won't abide in him. So there is effort on our part. When I say effort, I don't mean working, working it up, but there's a there's a thing that we must do. And I would suggest to you there's an intentionality of heart and mind to give God time. There's an intentionality to be still. You know, we could say abide, remain, be still. All of these give a, thing, uh, give a picture of what we're meant to do. But there's something for us to do. You know, in this busy world with all its distractions, being still is an active thing. We actively be still. We intentionally remain. We intentionally and purposefully give time. And we try to cut out the distractions so that we can do these things. Why do we want to do them? So that we can remain in Jesus and his life can flow through us. So, we're on to the third discipline, the third practice. The discipline is one word for it. A practice is another word for it. And that third practice is the practice of prayer. There's been loads of books written about it. There's been all kinds of stuff said about it. But let me just use some very simple uh, analogies or sayings. Prayer is the Christian's way of communicating with God. And please notice, communicating with God, not communicating just to God. There is a to God in prayer, but it's not just communicating to him, it's communicating with him. So there's a listening involved. God loves this communication and connection with us, just as we love communication and connection with those that we love. Fellowship, friendship, relationship with God is at the heart of prayer. Imagine a relationship that was based on just asking. Can you imagine myself with my wife and that's all I did was ask questions, ask her for things. No, there's a listening involved. And I'm, you know, I'm learning that all the time. I'm not brilliant at it, but I need to listen. There's a, a commun communication, there's relationship, and sometimes we don't say anything. We're just in each other's presence, and that all builds in relationship. And this is what prayer is all about. It's that communication with God. It's that joining of God and us together. It's the main way of communication uh, through the Bible. Now, Jesus did it right throughout the Gospels. Jesus prayed. Now, if Jesus needed to pray, if he felt the need to go aside and pray, so much more, I say. Uh, Luke 5, 15 to 16 says this, Yet the news about him spread all the more. So the crowds of people came to hear him, and he healed, of the, uh, the, he was, they healed the sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed. The lonely place, we, we've talked about that, that solitude, and prayed. This is so important, the communication with his father. In Luke 6, 12, it says this, one of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spend the night praying in God, to God. The whole night, the whole night, 
long times of communion, of relationship with God. And this is what prayer is all about. And Jesus did it often right throughout the New Testament. Now, we can pray for all kind of reasons. I'm very quickly going to go through some of those reasons with us. We pray to praise God and to thank him and tell him how much we love him. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his name. Praise the Lord, my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Yeah, and it goes on to say more, you know. Uh, who forgives our sins and heals our diseases. Who redeems our life uh, from the pit and crowns us with love and compassion. Who satisfies the desires, our desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. We, we tell, we, we pray so that we can praise God. We can thank him and tell him how much we love him. Hallelujah. He's a great God, and his scripture says, so we're praising God. We're worshipping him. We're saying thank you, and we're giving him praise. We pray, we pray to tell him what's going on in our lives. God already knows, because he's God. But he wants that relationship of us telling him what's going on in our life. Psalm 62, verse 8 says like this, Trust in him. At all times, you people, and listen to this, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Pour out your hearts. Tell him everything that's going on in your life. He's interested. You know, when we talk to people, some people are interested in some of the things, some are not interested in others. You know, I can talk a glass eye to sleep when I start talking uh, about rugby. And some people love that because they're into rugby. Other people, they're not interested at all. And I can see them glazing over as I'm talking about rugby and as I'm talking about all the different things. But God is interested in everything that is in our hearts. Pour out your hearts to him. Wow, what a wonderful a way of prayer. We pray to make requests requests of him to ask him for things and for people and this is probably the prayer we're most used to is we come and we ask god of things and there's nothing wrong with it but it's a shame if that's the only thing we do but it is a proper thing to pray um, matthew 6 verse 11 says give us today our daily bread it's a part of what we call the lord's prayer give us today our daily bread we need things lord give us the things that we need for life and God wants to answer. And Romans 10, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for, uh, for the Israelites is that they may be saved. So Paul is saying, I pray for all the Israelites that they may be saved. He's praying for people. He's praying for a whole people group. And it's right for us to pray for people that we know who don't know the Lord Jesus. We pray for them. We pray for people in many different ways we pray for them to be healed we pray for them to have peace we pray for them to know uh, uh, what to do for guidance for other people but we also pray that people who don't know the lord jesus would come to know him because we can't force anybody we can't argue anybody into the kingdom of heaven in fact we wouldn't want to we pray that god would show himself and reveal himself and uh, so we can pray for people as Paul is praying for Israel here. We use prayer to seek guidance. Perhaps today you're wondering what you should do. Is there a certain path you should take? And uh, you can pray. You can ask God to show you what you should do and what path you should take. Ask him to make it clear to you. It might be some big decisions that you're wondering about. Well, you can come to God in prayer and you can ask him for, to help you. But you need to wait and listen. We'll go on to that in a moment. But Psalm 25, verses 4 to 5 says this. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my saviour and my hope is in you all day long. So God can show us direction, 
That is, this is obviously talking about how to live as well, but also what we should do is paths for us and how we should live. We can ask him for guidance. You see, prayer is so many things. We also pray when we're in a spiritual fight. Now, that might be uh, strange words for some people, but we believe that there is a force of good, God and the uh, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all his angels uh, are, good, uh, are the good force, the good spirit. And then there's evil forces. There's evil, the devil, and all his demons. We believe there is a spiritual realm to be had. And uh, those dark forces are doing war against God and against his people. And we can use prayer as a weapon in that struggle, in that fight. And uh, Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 19, I'm going to take just some verses from there. I'm not going to read it all, just to give you the picture, because this is a great passage on what we call spiritual warfare. It talks about the armor of God and all kinds of stuff. But let's look at some of this. Finally, uh, verse 10 in Ephesians 6, finally be strong in the Lord and his mighty power, Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Often we think it's just against other people. But our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world. So he's just saying, he's setting the scene. We're in a spiritual fight. How does prayer uh, help? Well, after he's named all... Uh, Paul has named all the different uh, spiritual uh, weapons that we should put on, the, the things that we should put on and use. He then says this in verse 18. And, so that links it, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people, we're talking about praying for one another, but prayer is a powerful weapon against the works of the devil and against the dark forces. We also pray. It's amazing, isn't it? We, you know, we can take prayer and we can just be asking God for stuff, but prayer is so involved in so many different ways. We pray because it changes circumstances. Amazing completely changes circumstances. 2 Samuel verses 24, uh, 2 Samuel 24 verse 25 says this, and David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord answered his prayer on behalf of the land and the plague on Israel was stopped. This circumstance, there was a plague in Israel. And because David came and did what he did, the Lord answered his prayer. Notice that David built an altar and burnt offerings and fellowship of offerings. He doesn't say that David prayed, but the Lord answered his prayer. His prayer was a physical prayer. His prayer was worshipful. His prayer was building a sac an altar and, offer and offering offerings and sacrifices. But the Lord answered his prayer on behalf of the land. Amazing. And a circumstance in the land was changed. And we can pray for circumstances to be changed. Yes, global circumstances, national circumstances, but circumstances in your life can be changed. And we pray so that we will be changed. Not only circumstances, but we can be changed. I'm looking at Acts 4 here. Uh, if you want to look at it up in your Bible, and I know I'm giving you lots of verses, and there's loads of Bible verses here, but I just want to show you that all these prayers that I'm talking about are found in God's Word. This is not just wishful thinking. This is God's Word into a, this practice of prayer. And we, we pray because it changes us. Uh, Acts 4 is talking about Peter and John. They've been brought in front of the religious leader and they've been grilled. And, you know, it goes on to say, 
uh, that they, they're told that they mustn't talk about Jesus anymore, otherwise they'll be persecuted. But they, they, come, they get released from prison and they go and see their, the, other, the other people who believed in Jesus at that time. And verse 29, listen to this, is amazing. Now, Lord, it says, Acts 4, verse 29. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Do you see what they're praying for? They're not praying for the circumstances. They're not praying all that the threats will go away. They're not praying that, oh, uh, make them understand the word of God. They, they may well have prayed that, but they're not praying for the circumstances to change. These threats are here. There's a, uh, the church is going to be persecuted and all of these things, but they're not praying that that would stop. Now, there's nothing wrong with praying that those things will stop, but they also pray that they would be changed that they would have courage, enable your servants to speak with wor your word with great boldness. They're praying, Lord, change us. In this instance, make us brave. Make us people who can withstand the opposition. Make us people who are faithful. And prayer does that. When we're in communion with God, he encourages us encourage to put courage in and we need courage as God's people as we speak his word and as we live our life in the in this world but we also pray amazing isn't it how many how many things come into this section of prayer to enjoy God's presence Matthew 6 verse 9 this then is how you should pray our Father. Now, I just want to look at that. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I did a talk on that very statement on the 6th of September. So look at that if you want more about this. But this is presence. This is enjoying presence. God as our Father. And I know that word Father can give you all kinds of images. And I haven't got time to go into that again. So please do look at the talk I did in on the 6th of September for that. But this image of Father is the one who enjoys us being with him. That coach from him. That closeness to him. Holding us up as children. Just imagine it, if you will. As being held in God's arms. Our, our head close to his chest. We can hear his heart beating. There's a warmth, a security, and a love that is expressed, enjoying his presence. Our Father. You haven't got to go much further than that, have you? Just to know that God loves you, and he wants you to be in his presence. But what about when God seems not to answer prayer? When he says, no, or oh, wait. That's difficult, isn't it? But you know what? There's parts of the Bible that are devoted to talking to God through the hard and difficult times. It's confusing why we've got to wait, why sometimes God answers straight away, and other times it seems that there's, there's no answer, or we've got to wait ages for answer. And why is that? Why was there a delay? And how do we live in the waiting? How do we live in the yet but not yet? How do we live with the, the tension of God who answers prayer and yet we aren't seeing answers to prayer? Well, there's a prayer of lament, of coming to God, not with a whining, not in a, in a posture of, of complaining to God, but of not understanding and of even anger and rage and disil disillusionment and confusion. Questions of frustration. You can bring them to God. You can pray prayers of lament to God. The book called Lamentations in the Bible and there's, the Psalms are full of, of, of the writers of the Psalms coming to God and going, God, I don't understand why this is happening. And you know what? God is big enough 
to deal with that. God is big enough. You know, we come to God and we know, we know as a bedrock that he's good. We know as a bedrock that he's got our best intentions at heart. He's, we know that he's for us, not against us. And yet, if we're honest, there are frustrations about prayers that we haven't seen answered for all, all kinds of different reasons. And you know, we can come and be honest with God. We can come and say to him, God, I don't understand. Help me. I don't understand. I'm frustrated, God. It seems that you're not answering this. It seems that uh, as if the heavens are like brass. In other words, your prayers aren't, you, you feel as if your prayers aren't being affected, affecting at all. They're not touching heaven somehow. And there's room for us to come and to ask God those things. And he can answer us. And we, let's be ready for his answer. Now, the best way, in my opinion, to learn how to pray is to pray. There's loads of helpful information about prayer. There's loads of books being written, as I said. And uh, in a minute, I'm going to outline some stuff. But before we do that, let's have an underlying principle. Parents respond to children when children call to them. And of course, they, they, they need to learn how to call and to be polite and say please and thank you and how to speak to their parents and all that. Can, but there's a heart response. The child calls out to the parent and it can be all kinds of calling out. They can be calling out in anger. They can be calling out in gratitude. They can, can be calling out for help. They can be calling out just to be with their parents. And what does the good parent do? The good parent hears that call and comes and embraces and does. There, there may be discipline involved. I know that. But see the picture I'm trying to create. You see, prayer is about relationship. And we're all in this journey. We're in different parts of the journey, but we're all on this journey of getting to know God. And as we come, yes, there's helpful tips out there, and I'm going to share some of them because they are helpful. But prayer, praying, is the best way to learn how to pray. You know, you can read the books, and that's good. You know, uh, if I want to lose weight, and I, I, I often say this, I do need to lose weight, and I'm trying to lose weight, I can read all the diet books. I can read all the good things to do. I can read how to do it and what to do and what to eat. But actually, the thing that makes me lose weight is that I put some of them into practice. I start doing them. I stop eating some stuff. I start eating the right stuff. I stop sitting around and I start to exercise and I start to lose weight. And the best way to learn how to pray is to pray, to come to God and pray. But there are some helps. There are some helps. So uh, 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 Pete Gregg, in his book, How to Pray, says, uh, he uses the word pray as an acronym, and he, the P is for pause. Slow down and center. Give yourself some time. The R is for rejoice. Adoration and thanksgiving. That's great, isn't it? To praise and to thank God. A is for ask, petition, intercession, and perseverance. Keep on going. The Y is yield, contemplation, listening. Such an important part of prayer to listen. Confession and spiritual warfare. That's from the book How to Pray by Pete Gregg. There's a prayer course by Pete Gregg that you can go on. I think it's eight weeks a prayer course, brilliant. Learn all these different things. There's the ACTS way. Again, A stands for adoration. C for confession. T for thanksgiving. S for supplication. Supplication means asking for something earnestly and humbly. Um, you could look up uh, practicingtheway.org. Uh, practices to be with Jesus. A lot of our talks have come from that as a, kind of, as a kind of base area. We've developed some of those things, but they're the base area. There's loads of stuff on there from uh, practicingtheway.org. 
fantastic uh, lots of resource there that we could do. So, to close, to close this time, thank you for listening, and to close this time together, here's some of my tips for you. To pray this week, to put into practice this week what we've heard. Give yourself time to pray. Deal with distractions. Whatever they are, some of them will need to be done before you give yourself time. Some of them, they can wait. Just put them on the shelf. Get rid of the phone. Get rid of all of those stuff. Put them aside. Deal with the distractions. Give yourself a focus of adoration and praise and thankfulness. Why? Because asking things is what we do naturally. Most of us, are used to, if we're used to prayer, are used to asking God for stuff. But give yourself a focus of adoration and praise and thankfulness. Have your Bible and a notebook handy, just in, God, just in case God wants to say something to you through the scripture, through the Bible. Write it down. Or, if you're artistic, draw it. You haven't got to have a notebook. You can have paper and paints, crayons, whatever you want to do. Coloured pencils. Do be artistic. Be creative in your listening. Relax. Relax. Try to centre yourself, as Pete Gregg says. Try to focus on God. Try your best. Give yourself grace that you, uh, your mind may wander. Just bring your mind back. Just bring your mind back. Ask God to come close to you. It's the most basic prayer, isn't it? Holy Spirit, come. Ask God by his Holy Spirit to come close to you. And keep talking. Not that prayer is only talking, but I'm just using it as an expression. Whatever you're going through, keep coming back to God. Keep talking. You know, sometimes when people are going through difficult relationship things, we just say to them, don't we, keep talking. Make sure that you keep the communication lines open. And sometimes our communication isn't exactly good communication, but the communication's open. Keep on going. Persevere. As some of you will be praying for hours a day, you're real prayer warriors. Others of us are struggling to get a minute uh, where we can just pray and be quiet and thank God for anything or ask him for anything or do anything at all. Prayers out of the window. But keep on going. It's not a call of running faster. It's a call to keep on going. Do you know when some human relationships are broke, breaking down, we say to them, keep talking. Keep the communication lines open. And I want to encourage us. Come to God. However you're feeling, we've gone through a whole list of different ways a prayer can be used. Keep on coming to God. Keep asking him. Lord our God, we thank you for this practice of prayer. We pray that you'd help us to be prayerful in our lives. Give us time in this week to come that we can dedicate time to you in prayer, in waiting on you, on listening to you, and in thankfulness to you, and in all the other types of prayer that we will need to pray. Help us, I pray. Oh Lord, we're on this journey. None of us have cracked it. Some of us can pray for hours. Some of us struggle with a minute. Oh Lord, take us on this journey with you. Help us to feel your warmth and your embrace as we pray. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. And let's see if we can put some of these things into practice over these next seven days. God bless. Thank you, Mike. I just feel it'd be a great opportunity just to pray, just to, to seek God's voice in this time. Um, I just, I want to pray, and I just want to wait on, wait on the Lord. And I just in, invite you all as well just to join with me um, as we pray now. Lord, thank you that we can have this relationship with you. 
Lord, thank you that we can talk to you. We can share our thoughts and our needs and our heart's desire with you, Lord. And we can continue to tune in to relationship of talking, but also hearing your voice. And I'd, Lord, I pray you just, we would hear you right now wherever we are. Yes, Lord. Be with us in this moment, in this space, in this time, Lord. Take away the distractions and the worries of life and let us come to you. Before, before we started filming the service, I had the Psalm 4-8 really jumped out to me. In peace I will both lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. And I just feel that there may be people who just need to lie down with God, even today, and just find peace in this season. Because he wants to make you dwell, be with, make room in your house, in your heart, make you feel safe. Bring your peace. And I just, um, I just sense. I'm like, this is always a really strange experience because we we record ahead of time. <laughs> and to do these services and I just have to, to rely on God and, and that's how I want to live my life but I just sense maybe like there's people who are just crying from the inside and I just have this sense of like a, a crying heart and a sad heart and I just feel like the Lord just wants to say how much he loves you how much he cares for you and, and he just wants to wrap his hands around, around you right now in this moment We just pray on that. Lord, I just thank you how much you love and care for us. Lord, I pray for those, those of us who are feeling sad and, and broken inside right now, Lord, that we would know your touch and your embrace. Lord, you you turn our sadness into joy. Lord, you would pull others in to hear your voice and come and act and love and stand around these individuals as well right now. Lord, that we, your church, would feel stirred to reach out even in this moment and just send someone a message of encouragement and love. And Lord, we could model your love in practical ways. I just thank you for, for being with us, Lord. Thank you for loving us and pouring your grace on us and dying on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins, so we may live a new and free life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please do encourage you to, to connect with your circle, to connect with a friend, and if anything is stirred within, within you today. And then again, thank you for journeying with us. Remember, we're not on our own. We're here as a church to stand together to to give our battle cry into this land right now and say there's hope even in lockdown, even in desperate times. God is good and his love endures forever. See you next time.
Hey guys, how's it going? So we've got a bit of a special kind of emanate today. Well, it's not really special, but I think it's special because we're gonna be making forts. That's right, I'm gonna make a fort out of like household stuff. I don't know if you guys remember, back at the beginning of lockdown in March, IKEA released a bunch of designs out of their own kind of way of designing things for their flat pack furniture, but they designed fortresses. Stuff you can use at your own house to make a fort. So we're gonna build one. So join me, let's check it out. I think I'm gonna go for the house. I think I've got all the things for that. So let's see how it goes. All right, so we're gonna need a bunch of different things. We're gonna need sheets, which I've got here. It says two, but I've got three. So I think the kitchen table's maybe a little bit bigger. So got three, these are quite small. Got three, got a bunch of pegs. It says supposed to have pegs, so I got a bunch of pegs, uh, books. I think we got eight books there. Yeah, we can use those books. Um, I've got a bunch of pillows as well, and look what I found, like right on the design. Check this out. I'm so happy with this. Kind of got this the other day. Look at this lantern. It's like almost the exact one that was like on the designs. So I'm gonna try and put this together. I'm gonna Gonna have to move all the stuff off the table and see how we get on. Let's go. So the fort is done. And it's a lot quicker than I thought actually. Um, but I had to make a few adjustments because things didn't quite work out. So let me, let me give you a tour. Should I give you a tour? So this is our fort right here. And don't think I forgot Teddy because I did not. There you go. So I got another one of these lights. Kind of, they're solar powered, so it's kind of work like that. And put some pillows in there. Quite dark in there, but quite cozy, quite short. But um, did it? Only I need to use four bucks. This is where I had to make an adjustment. So the table was a little bit bigger than the blankets, so I had to use an extra blanket, and I had to use some sofa cushions to kind of um, mask this little gap. You don't want gaps in your fort. Let's put this peg on, shall we? Might as well use it. Yeah, so that's our fort, and then we've got two other books here, and then the other cushions. So that is our fort. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Making a fort in the house is awesome. Look at it. Just chill in here, read, relax. It's so much fun. And probably the best process is actually making it. Don't anyone ever tell you that you're too old to make a fort because you're not. We did a video on stability and how God is our rock when things are unstable. In the same place, God is described as our fortress. Now, a real fortress is a place of security, of safety, a place where people are protected and looked after. It protects them from the weather, from the elements, and it also protects them from other people who are trying to hurt them. Unlike this fort, this fort only really protects me from monsters. It's true. No monster can get you when you're under a blanket. And I've got three blankets. Now, if I were to poke my hand out or my foot, that is risky. We all want a place of security, a place of peace, a place where we can rest, a place where we can thrive and be who we are made to be. We all need a fortress in our life. And that is why God is described as that fortress. He can be our protection. He can look after us. He can give us that place that we can be who we are made to be. So let's rest in God. Let's see him as our fortress and spend time in that protection, in that peace, because he wants to look after us. 
Hey guys, we've got a challenge for you this week. Last week, we did a video on building fort and it was pretty fun. So our challenge to you this week is to see if you can build the best fort. Tag us on your Instagram stories, on your Instagram page, but there's also an extra challenge as well. Once you've built the fort, the challenge is this. How long can you stay in your fort in silence? No distraction, nothing. As Christians, we love to spend time with God and give in time to God in silence and solitude. So that's our challenge this week. Can you sit in your fort in silence without any distractions, no phone, and how long can you do it for? Time yourself, tag us in your fort photos, and also add a timestamp on there on how long you did. We got a little bit of a present and a prize for the winner. We're excited to see your forts, guys. Get them going. <laughs>